Hi, my name is Arianne and I am the author of My Life as a Potato. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite writing techniques called writing with sensory detail. This basically just means that when we describe things in our writing, we describe them using our five senses. The sense of sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. So the sense of smell, um, I put on orange paper to remind us of an orange. Instead of saying, I ate an orange, you might say, I cracked open the orange peel and could smell the sweet, fresh citrus, citrusy um, scent. Um, sense of touch, I wrote on green paper so we could think of grass. Instead of saying, I felt the grass, you might say, I brushed my hand through the spiky, pokey grass. Now we can feel that, that kind of grass and know what kind of grass it is. Okay, blue paper for hearing. Instead of saying there was a river, we might describe that using our sense of hearing by saying the river rushed and roared down the side of the mountain. Now we can hear that river rushing and roaring. It really helps us feel like we're part of the world. Sense of taste is on red paper to remind us of our tongue. If we're walking, if our character is walking through the desert, maybe his lips are covered with sweat and it tastes salty on his tongue. Um, that's using, describing the scene using your sense of taste. And finally, we have our sense of sight. Now, writing using the sense of sight is also called using imagery because you can really paint a good visual image for your reader. So instead of saying there was sunlight, we might describe it more like a picture. We might say streams of golden sunlight poked out through the fluffy white clouds. Can't you see that picture in your head? It's a lot more exciting than just saying it was a sunny day. All right, we are going to play a little game. I'm going to read five sentences from my life as a potato and each one of the sentences refers to, some of them use the sense of sight, uh, another one hearing, taste, smell, and touch. So it's your job to guess which of the senses I am describing in these sentences. All right, number one. This is a part where Ben is feeling embarrassed and he says, my ears feel like they just came out of the toaster. What do you think? That is describing the sense with the sense of touch. Even though he's not touching something with his hands, his ears are heating up and we can almost feel that when we hear him um, describing it. Okay, next. I bite into a gooey brownie and it's an explosion of sugary awesomeness. What do you think? Okay, that uses the sense of taste. And who doesn't like imagining that they are tasting a brownie, right? So it's always fun to use a sense of taste if your reader is eating something. Okay, next up. I burst through the cafeteria doors in a daze and breathe in the trademark scent of grease, pizza sauce, and sweaty armpits. All right, that used the sense of, did you get it? Smell. I think many of us have been in a school cafeteria and describing the sweaty kids and the pizza, burnt pizza and all that, um, it kind of brings us back to something we recognize. Okay, and last, oh no, there's two more. Oh, I like this one, it's fun. The hot dog zips through the air, smooth as a jet, and boings off the clock's 12, leaving a splotch of grease. All right, so he threw a hot dog at the clock, and 
I described that using the sense of hearing. We can hear it zipping through the air and boinging off the clock's glass. Okay, finally, this last one, if you've been keeping track, you might already know what it's going to be. Okay, this is talking about the potato mascot when we meet him for the first time. It says the spud mascot hops around and pumps his twiggy fists in the air like a giant bean bag come to life. He looks like Mr. Potato Head's nephew, the same cartoonish smile and googly eyes, but no mustache. That uses a lot of imagery. We can see the twiggy little arms, the big plushy potato costume, just like a bean bag, and the googly eyes. It's a lot more fun than just saying, there was a potato mascot. Okay, now I'm going to show you a sentence and give an example of how you might pump it up using the five sentences. And pay attention because after I'll give you a sentence and your challenge will be to pump it up using the five sentence senses. So this is a pretty good sentence. The dog walked into the room. Now, if we were to make this a little more exciting using sensory detail, we might say he was panting really heavily. We might paint a picture for our reader by saying his tongue hung out of his mouth the color of a pink eraser. Hmm, what should our dog smell like? Maybe he smells like fresh lavender shampoo. If they just gave him a bath. Okay, taste is a sensory detail that you probably want to use sparingly unless your characters are eating all the time. But maybe if you're in the room eating a cracker when the dog walks in, you can describe the salty taste in your mouth. And finally, maybe you go to pet the dog and he has thick, curly hair. Now your reader has a much better picture of the dog and it's a lot more fun to read with all that sensory detail. Okay, it's your turn. I'm going to give you a sentence and I want you to pause the video and try to describe this sentence using at least three of the five senses. So the sentence is, mom made breakfast in the kitchen. So when I tell you to pause it, pause it and try to write a few sentences of description um, referring to either the sense of hearing, taste, touch, smell, or use good imagery what things look like and paint a picture of that kitchen. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. All right, hopefully you were able to pause the video and I wish I could see what you wrote because I love reading things with sensory detail. But if there's an adult who can read what you wrote, go and show it to them. I'm sure they would love it. I want to end with one note about writing with sensory detail. Every time something new happens on the page, you don't have to overload your reader with all five senses all the time. But if you can pick out just one or two pieces of sensory detail to describe something or someone, then it will really take your writing to the next level. Thanks for listening to this video and happy writing.